this evening to talk all things colour. So for those of you that are joining us for the very first time, I'll run you through how our sessions work. So for the first half an hour, I will be on screen in front of the camera to talk all things colour. So please use this as an opportunity to, to upload any questions that you may have in regards to colour, certainly around any projects that you are embarking on and certainly around our wonderful portfolio of products that we have designed to protect and beautify your space. I can certainly offer some suggestions there. So as I said, upload any questions, I will do my best to answer them for you. Um, if you do have any photos or images of um, areas that you're liking some assistance with, um, wait until we finish streaming and then pop your images into the feed. Unfortunately, while we're live, um, it's impossible for you to upload any photos, so I believe. So, and then um, once we finish streaming after that half an hour, I usually hang back for a further half an hour or so until I complete answering everyone's questions. So thank you for joining us. You've come to the right place this evening to um, talk all things colour. So look, as we do each and every week, we usually start our session with um, a topic, if you like. And tonight we're talking all about interiors. And from uh, last week, we had um, the week off. I was interstate and we'll have some fantastic, exciting stuff to share um, in the weeks coming. And then prior to that, the week, unfortunately, I cricked my neck and was unable to um, be in front of the camera. But it doesn't stop questions coming through. And we have been asked quite a lot. And I know from the last few sessions that I've had, we are asked um, around using the same white for um, interiors and then carrying that white um, outside. So I thought it's a really good topic and I do know that a lot of our questions sort of revolve around whites. It generally is quite a topic of choice for everybody. Um, so what I'm going to do this evening is just to take you through a little bit of a journey around using whites. Um, obviously we're focusing on interior but that's not to stop you from putting any questions into the feed around anything that we can help you with and we'll do our best to assist you. So I'm going to swap screens and pop some images onto the screen and then talk you through. So just to give you, I'm the sort of, um, I learn visually and so I like to make this as easy as possible to sort of understand what I'm talking about and I like to keep it real and keep it simple. So I will take you to some images and we'll talk through those. So I'm going to pop the iPad up to the screen. Yes, looks like it's going to work and I'll pop myself into the corner. Fantastic. Okay, so can I use the same white for both interior and exterior? Well, look, you can use whatever you like to use. It's entirely up to you. I guess, um, you know, colors are very personal choice, but where I come in and where these come into, um, we're here to assist and to offer some guidance when selecting whites because we do get asked so many questions and using white internally versus externally is very different. So I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey, a few images as I said earlier. So these are two of our favoured whites if you like. So you've got our number one interior white is crisp white. And then for external application, surf mist is used extensively. And I do believe that it is our number one white for exterior use. So can I expect them to look the same? This is a question that has been sort of um, bombarding our feed, if you like. So when we're starting to talk about whites and using that white internally versus externally, how's it going to perform? So here's an image here you can see. You can see internal versus, you can see a little bit of the external. So there's two colors there, crisp white or surf mist. You know, looking at that, you've got to ask yourself the question, which one would you think is used from that image there. And I mean, to be fair, you're looking at the image, it does look like the outside looks lighter and the inside is looking darker. However, the outside we've used surf mist and internally crisp white. But because of lighting, and I must admit, these images were taken today, and where I am, um, as you know, that I am based in Queensland, However, it's a very dull sort of day today, not a lot of natural sunlight, but this is a really good way to show you how color goes 
um, internally versus externally and how it's performing. So there you go. So crisp white internally, surf mist on the exterior. And you can see there is on the second image there, there's a darker swatch. Now that's a swatch of um, color bond surf mist. And if I were to bring that external color that's been used on the outside to the interior, just from that one swatch there, you can see that it's a lot darker. So it would be fair to say that using the same color externally versus internally, internally in some areas, um, especially you don't have direct sunlight, etc., on it, it's going to look a lot darker. Again, crisp white or surf mist like you can see the weather boards there they do tend to look like you'd have a lighter lighter color on it and then for inside again it does look darker but same thing applies um, you've got your surf mist on the exterior weather boards and then for the internal color it is crisp white again now you can really see the difference here and this is um, as I said again taken today where there is no sun ordinarily the space um, the interior space receives a lot of natural sunlight and to the point where some days you have to put the blind down because it's too it's too blinding the sun so but this is just showing you how color changes and you can see internally so again crisp white on the walls and that same um, color bond surf mist swatch against the crisp white wall there. So if that color were to be placed again all over the internal walls, it would be darker still, yet outside looks so much lighter. So here are the colors again. So the there's four images um, on there. So the um, first image is surf mist against crisp white. And again, surf mist sitting up against crisp white. And then the final two images are showing the surf mist against the weatherboards and on the render, which are both um, surf mist. And again, chopping everything out and just showing you the color. So surf mist against crisp white and then the other two images again. So this just gives you an idea of how color changes within an environment and how it, I'll come back off screen and then I'll come back to that. Um, oops, might help, but that's better. <laughs> oops, a little rusty, I haven't been on screen for a while. But that just shows you. So I, as I said, I get asked extensively about using the same white internally and externally and how it's going to perform. And there are so many factors that come into play. And so obviously lighting is huge and looking at your color um, under artificial lighting versus natural light will really give you a true indication of how the color is going to perform exterior and interior. And so I guess the other thing is I talk about how um, a white used externally will, and I like to use the term kind of bleach out or lighten up. And you can really see that from those images, how the color is bleaching out or lightening up sort of over a spans outside in natural light. And you can imagine if it were a very sunny day today, that color again would look a lot lighter. So it's really important. I guess one of the key messages is to um, understand your environment so when you're selecting your white and also understand you know which way your house is facing north facing etc and understanding how that light's going to um, you know affect the color so to speak but the biggest tip that I can give you and for those that are watching will know that I talk about this all of the time is to get yourself a sample pot because if I were to say to you, yeah, sure, no worries, you can just use the same color outside, inside, not a problem. There won't, but it's gonna work, it's gonna be fine. It may not be, because as you can see from those images, that color that performs outside going really, really light, and then internally the color tends to um, appear darker. So a sample pot is the way to go, and what I would suggest you do is go down to your local bunning store, and our paint comes on to palettes and in between the layer of paint, we have what's called palette liners. So they're rather large pieces of cardboard. Grab yourself a piece of cardboard 
and I'm sure the um, paint team members will be obliging and help you with this. And what you do, get yourself a sample pot. Now you're wanting to look at color on at least a meter by a meter square. So that way you're going to really have a true understanding of how the color is going to perform within your environment. So I would brush out three coats. I know that our paints are generally a two coat system, but one of those coats is going to aid as an undercoat if you like. So three coats and once dry, there are two areas inside that I suggest you try the color. So here's our wall, here's our ceiling. So if you put your piece of cardboard here so that it is against the wall but meeting up to your ceiling, what's going to happen there is you're going to be able to see how the color performs under natural light and then of an evening, you know, you can pop on your, um, your lights, so to speak. So you'll also be able to see how it performs under artificial lighting because depending on um, the warmth or the coolness of your lighting, your color can change. Now the other area is, so here's your wall, but this time here's your floor. So we're gonna put the square, um, the sample square um, against the wall, but meeting the floor. Now the reason I say that is, there are things to take into consideration when selecting, and I really am you know, honing in on white. So things like wooden flooring, um, things like if you've got perhaps a red leather lounge, um, even the, the color of your window furnishing, so your blinds, etc., can affect the overall feel of your wall color. So by putting it down there near the floor, if you do have wooden floorboards, etc., you're going to be able to see how that color is going to look with everything else in the picture. So two areas to try, test, and also don't just do it in one room, sort of move it around your space and look at look at the colors in those areas in different rooms because obviously rooms that um, receive a lot of natural light, the color's going to appear different there. And then where your rooms are that do not receive much light, that um, are darker, the color is going to look different there as well. So I guess when we're playing with whites, um, it's really good to have an understanding of how it's going to um, appear, how that end result will look so that there's no disappointment. Look, I know that a lot of questions that I get coming through, and we had one the other day, um, was around white and the fact that the white was throwing blue. Um, so, you know, there's obviously when whites start out as, let's just say our brilliant white is our stock standard white in the can. It contains a lot of titanium dioxide and it's a beautiful, um, clean, bright white. And from that, that aids as the base to create some of the most beautiful whites that we have. And you know, like as we talk about crisp white, crisp white, we're using a little bit of raw umber tint and it creates the most beautiful white. Um, I have it throughout my entire home on my ceilings, walls, doors and trims. But of course, I'm using the applicable paint um, and sheen level to accommodate the areas. And I'll touch on that in a moment. Um, so it's good to understand your whites and not not, um, I suppose, whites that tend to throw blue generally have um, black tint in them and a lot of black tint standalone and primarily that can throw blue. But it's understanding how it looks within your space, hence the need to sample pot, not putting it directly on the wall, putting it onto a large piece of cardboard and you can move it around your space at different times of the day. And then I'll quickly touch on, so I mentioned just then, um, what I have in my home, crisp white, and making sure that you have the right product that is fit for purpose. So you've got a ceiling white is generally a flat, so the um, lesser sheen level, then it stops any um, glancing light, which is what you want, and it has the ability to hide any imperfections, especially when we're talking about ceilings. Um, and then you've got on your walls, it depends on whether you choose to use a matte finish on your walls. Again, if you've got older walls um, or long hallways that may have a few slight imperfections, a matte finish is fantastic for that, for helping to hide imperfections. Um, otherwise, or you could use a low sheen. Low sheen is fantastic. And I'll be honest, most of the interior broad wall uh, for painting, you know, all of your walls inside basically are generally most people tend to use a low sheen. And then for your doors and trims, um, it's using, depends on whether you prefer a, a gloss um, finish or whether you prefer a semi-gloss finish. It's very, very personal, 
for me, I prefer a semi-gloss finish. Um, and the way you can see your color will change slightly dependent on the sheen level. And what I suggest you do now that you've brushed out or you're gonna go and brush out a large big um, square of color, you can actually just put a little bit of clear sticky tape over um, one part. And when you put that on there and you move it around, it gives you an indication of what the color is going to look like when it has you know, a gloss finish. So that's just a little trick. But the other thing that's really, really important when you are creating, let's say an all white aesthetic, um, or even if you're creating a beautiful, you know, if you are getting onto the trend now because we're finding that we're moving towards using a lot of color in our homes and you'll see when we launch our color forecast, um, how color is sort of, it's coming back in a big way. And there's some beautiful, beautiful colors. Um, but using a water-based enamel, the beauty of water-based is there's quite a few things and obviously it's um, quicker drying, it's very low VOC, so there's minimal smell. Um, our water-based enamel has mold inhibitors in it. Um, it's been endorsed by Sensitive Choice, so if anybody suffers from asthma or allergies, you're safe to use it. And that's also with um, um, Sensitive Choice has been endorsed as well with our Torbens Endure. Um, it's a fantastic product, especially when I was talking about broad wall. But I'll go back to the water-based enamel. I'm jumping around a bit, too much to tell you. That's what happens when you miss a couple of sessions. But a water-based enamel, the beauty of it is it's non-yellowing. So traditional oil-based enamel, like what my grandfather used to use when he painted his home, not only did the smell linger around for months, but it, um, it took a long time to dry and it would turn yellow or it would sort of golden up. So with the technology that we have now and using a water-based enamel, it stays beautiful and true to color. So it will stay a nice bright white. So that's something to consider, especially if you're doing, let's just say you're doing like what I have in my home, having crisp white sort of on everything. I don't want my doors and trims to discolor. I wanna keep that beautiful white aesthetic. So that's a little bit of um, product knowledge there. But going back to um, whites. Now I want to share with you something else. So when you're embarking on your journey and you're using whites, and I've talked about this before, and I know this is probably going a little bit more into the um, exterior of color as opposed to interior, but all of our colors have what's called an LRV, which is a light reflectance value. And you can find all of that information on our website. So when you go to www.torbins.com, .com.au and then you select on colors um, and then you go down to the bottom which is where we have our swatch shop where you can order um, brush outs of color and you can also order sample pots of color online from there. You can in the search function search for the colors that you're looking at, click on the color and then up comes all of the information around that color. And so you'll find what's called an LRV, which is the light reflectance value. And I steer um, a lot of people or everybody towards this, especially when you're looking at whites for exterior so that you can understand about having a white that has enough um, intensity or enough tint, if you like, to be able to withstand the sun. There is nothing worse than having um, the exterior of your home painted in a beautiful white, but you cannot go and stand outside without your sunglasses on because it's too glary. So these, these are just things that we have available that can help you when you're starting your color journey. So we have what's called, as I said, the LRB. You can find all of that information at the swatch shop. And what I'm going to do is take you back to my iPad, pop myself up in the corner and just show you the difference. So we've been talking about whites and I have brought up our two most popular whites. So crisp white has an LRB of 89.5. And then Surf Mist has an LRV of 66.97. So let's just say 67. Okay, why am I telling you this? Okay, so when you look at an LRV, the light reflectance value, it goes like this. So 100 is white, and then we go down to zero being black. So if you are, for example, painting a front door, some front door manufacturers have stipulations around the LRV of a color so that you don't void warranty. So picture this brand new front door, you paint it black, you're in full sun, the black's going to draw the heat, 
perhaps the timber could um, twist and warp, which can then potentially void your warranty. So for example, um, some door manufacturers may ask for an LRV to be 50 or greater. So that means you're gonna to go to a mid-tone color and then you're going to go lighter. So with crisp white sitting at 89.5, to me, if I were to put that on the exterior of my home, it is too light. Whereas, and I've shown you from those images tonight, surf mist sitting at 67, when, and you're looking at on that, looking at the colors on the screen and you're going, you know what, that color has got a lot of tint. When you put it outside, it does tend to bleach out or, or dilute out, so to speak. So when I'm working with whites and when I'm sitting here and I'm helping you all with colors and you know, you're saying to me, what's a really good white? What's going to work with this? And I've got my little color bond, um, lot of swatches and I'm looking at a particular gray or I'm sorry, I'm looking at a particular white that's going to work with a particular gray color bond color. I will look and go, yep, that marries in really well. And then I'll quickly have a look at the LRV and ensure that it has enough substance where it's not going to be too glary, especially if you're in full sun. So for anybody that's looking for whites for external application, I suggest, and this is purely just my suggestion, have a look at whites that sit anywhere from about 65 to 75. You can kind of push it to 80. Um, anything greater than 80, I personally feel is probably too light for an overall broad wall exterior application. That's my opinion, and especially I take into consideration, you know, obviously the fact that I'm in Queensland, full sun, etc. But yes, so if you want to know, as I've touched on, about the LRVs and being able to find that information, hop onto our website and um, hop on, click on colors and then sort of go down to the bottom of the screen. The swatch shop is there and you can find all of the information. And once I finish streaming, I'll be very happy to pop a link in there so that you can visit that. Now, the other thing I want to show you is some of our most popular whites. So if you are embarking on that interior white journey and you're not sure where to start, these are whites that um, are extremely popular. So our um, tint data tells us. So these are some of the ones, the crisp white is our number one. Um, if you're not sure where to start and you really want that beautiful white aesthetic, I always say crisp white is a really good white to begin with. And the reason I say that is because it just contains raw umber, just a smidge of raw umber tint, and it has a beautiful soft glow, it works extremely well in areas that are saturated in natural light. Um, but it also works extremely well in areas that lack light. So that's a really good one to start with. The other suggestion I have if you are embarking on a white journey and you're kind of, you know, you're standing at that color wall and you're like, oh, I don't know where to start. There's another beautiful white called Alpine Snow. Now, I tend to love whites that have more of a neutral undertone. And by neutral, I kind of mean tone, um, the undertone tends to be uh, a green gray beige effectively. And because it's got that slight green element to it, green, it tends to work, I suppose, the green element. And that this applies also to greys, working um, with greys that have a green undertone, again, is um, what I would refer to as more of a neutral grey. These types of tones work really well in most environments and with most other finishes. And it's a really good starting point. Now the other thing I've got here as well, so I've already talked about crisp white and I've already touched on alpine snow, but there's another couple of whites going into you know soft neutral tones that I think are really worth talking about. Now there's a color here called Aria Ivory. Now this is a beautiful, I'm gonna say white, um, but it tends to have a very soft, warm, um, element to it and it tends to have um, a slight beige with a little bit more if I were to say um, creamy undertone and what I love about it is because of the elements that are on trend at the moment you know when we're talking about so you've got your things like travertine this color sits exceptionally well with things like that and I know that because we're going through um, 
a, a modern Mediterranean aesthetic and those sorts of colors, the beautiful arches, they look fantastic. Um, obviously with your travertines, your terrazzos, and the Aria Ivory marries extremely well. So that's another one to have a look at. Now I've also put another one in here, which I think is a fantastic color. It's called Portland Stone. It is the most beautiful, again, neutral that has that beautiful warmth to it, but it tends to have a slightly more pink undertone. And you'll start to see the colors that are uh, becoming on trend, if you like, that you'll start to see coming through with the latest forecasts um, and with what's happening um, with, with the trends. You'll see beautiful colors such as um, beautiful soft terracottas, um, almost like you know a, a toasted almond color, um, chocolatey tones, and even colors that are, how would I say, sitting on the edge. So they're not quite pink, but they're not quite brown. This color is the perfect backdrop for those other tones. So I'd suggest, you know, if you're embarking on um, a journey where you're about to begin painting your home and you're not sure um, where to start, these are my four top whites that I would suggest go and get a sample pot of. And as I mentioned before, getting your large piece of cardboard, brushing out onto a meter by a meter square, three coats of each color onto each individual piece of card, and then see how these colors work for you because they are absolutely beautiful. Okay, I might come back on screen. I think I've, I've covered all those images, fantastic. All right, let's see. I don't think we've had any questions. It looks like it might be a rather quiet night, but I will put the... Um, question out to our team just to ask if there are any questions and we'll see how we go. If not, I'm sure I can keep talking. No, we haven't got any questions. Okay, it must be a very, very quiet night out there or maybe I've talked too much. But what I will do is I will pop some links into the feed for everybody um, on some of the colors that I have mentioned this evening. Um, also, I will pop a link into the feed of information that you can find um, regarding our um, swatch shop. And also, I will pop through into the feed. Oh, we've got some questions coming in now. I will pop into the feed um, some links to, I did talk about our beautiful, and I know I say beautiful a lot, but they are, they're fantastic products. Um, I will pop a link in to our water-based enamel. I think it is the most amazing product. And it does, like some water-based enamels don't self-level um, that well. This one, it does. It can give you that beautiful, beautiful um, finish, almost like a mirror finish. So you can achieve some fantastic um, looks with our um, water-based enamel. And I'll also pop a link into my one favorite product, which is our Torbins in Jewel, which has the Nanagar technology. Okay, so hi, Nicole, thank you for joining us. What sort of white is cradle white? Let me just have a look. Is it creamy or cooler? No, I think you'll find it's more, um, it's a lot more, it's not really cool. Let me just have a look here. Let's see if I can find it for you. So I won't be able to find it now that I've said I'll find it. It has, it's definitely not cool. So there's certainly no blue to it. Now, if I were to, it's slightly warmer. There's not a huge amount of um, tint in it. To me, it looks like it may have a little bit of, um, of umber like raw umber, so it's got a slight warmth to it, very, very slight. Now I'll hold it up to the screen and hopefully you can see what it looks like. I'll put it up against our stock standard white, brilliant white, so that you can see the undertone yourself. Hopefully it will work. Otherwise I can bring it up on screen. Maybe I might do that, it might be easier. Mind you, it depends on what you're looking at at home. Sometimes the screen's not always great. Okay, so the top one, give it the top color here is um, Brilliant White. This color here is your Cradle White. I don't know whether you can see. 
So it's got a very slight warmth to it. I think it's a beautiful white. What are you um, wanting, Nicole? What are you wanting to put with it? You can't see it yet. Okay, what I'll do is quickly, I'll get it up on screen and that way you can see it for yourself. Let me, and then I'll share my screen. Because we lit up like a Christmas tree in here and it's not always fantastic. Okay, but we'll have to remember. Okay, let's just have a look here. Perfect. All right, I'll pop myself up in the corner. So that's cradle white. I hope you can see that um, well enough at home, everybody. It does have a very slight warmth to it. It's only very minimal. Um, and I would certainly, as I've talked about earlier on tonight, have a look at trialing at first via a sample pot because what you're seeing on screen will all be dependent on, um, you know, the type of device that you're looking at, the pixelations in your screen, the colors can look completely different. So the best way is sample pot, trial it, and then you can see for yourself how it's going to work in your environment with everything that you have in your home. All right, I'll come back here. All right, so um, Kirsten, thank you for joining us. So what would you recommend for bathroom walls type of paint? You know what I would recommend? I would recommend Taubman's Endure. Um, it has your, so it has what they call nanoguard technology. So if you were to put a standard paint film under a microscope, it has um, what they call a one size paint particle. And then, you know what? How about I just grab, I'll do you a beautiful diagram. Let me just see here. Just don't hold me against my drawing here. So, nanoguard, so a standard paint film looks something like this if you were to put it under a microscope. So you've just got a one size paint particle. Endure has that standard paint particle, but it also has smaller paint particles, which fill the, sort of fill the airspace as you can see there. And what that does is it creates what they call an interlocking molecular structure. So what that means is you can scrub the surface, the structure won't change. It contains bacteria shield, so it's got all of your um, anti-mold properties built within the paint. So you don't need to go and buy an add-on and put it into your paint, it's all there. Um, it is just the most beautiful product to use. It has been endorsed by Sensitive Choice, so it is um, suitable for anybody that suffers from asthma or allergies. Um, as I said before, it's scrub resistant, um, it's mold resistant, and um, very low VOC, so minimal smell as well. It is just the most amazing product. I have it in my home at home. I'm here in my home now on all of my walls. I've got two teenagers, or actually two young adults, three dogs, a cat. We've got everything happening in our house. And you can walk past the walls, you can mark the wall, and you can just wipe it straight off. It is amazing stuff. So I would recommend that all the way. I think it is a brilliant product. Okay, so um, what else do I have here? Okay, so Nicole, you've said your exterior cladding will be cradle white and trims crisp white and the roof surf mist. We're scared to have a stark white. Or should I do trims cradle white? Okay, so you can, I think with cradle white and crisp white, I don't think that there's a huge amount of difference when I'm looking at my swatch. Bear in mind, I'm looking here in a room that is lit up, as I said before, like a Christmas tree. Oh yeah, there's, there is, there's a little bit of difference. I beg your pardon. So yeah, that works quite nicely together. And the other thing you could do is certainly look to use um, Brilliant White. Let me just have a look and see how that is going to look to see whether it's... Brilliant White is just the line between the two colours is just a little bit um, 
sharper. So there's a little bit more definition between the two colors. So brilliant white would work a treat. The only thing I would say, um, Nicole, is depends on you know where you're um, where you're based. Like as I've been showing you tonight, my colors are. I'm based in Queensland where, you know, every second house, actually every house is pretty much white of some degree. Um, but what I would recommend, so before you begin painting your cladding, just test it, as I mentioned tonight, on that large piece of cardboard, brushing out three coats of colour and trialling it in full sun just to see how it works for you to ensure that it's not too stark or too bright. That is what I would suggest. Okay. I think that's um, that's a wrap for this evening. I've gone over time, but I will be sitting behind the computer to answer any further questions. So please keep them coming. Um, thank you very much everybody for joining us this evening. It's been fantastic. I hope you've um, got something out of learning a little bit about our whites and application for interior and exterior. Um, and as I said, if you do have any more questions, pop them in the, into the feed. I'll be very happy to answer them for you. And now if you do have any images, now's a great time to pop them in as well. Okay, so thank you very much everybody for joining us this evening. Um, stay safe everybody and until next week, as I always say, happy painting. Bye.